We're still at the start of set theory. We're looking at types of sets we can get. Now we've seen how to tabulate sets. We looked at set builder notation. What we're going to look at now is intervals. So if I look at some elements of the real numbers, A and B, where A is less than B, we can have a set that is an interval. So let's take a look at this. Let's just look at the first one. We're not going to go through all of them. But if I've got an interval, let's look at an example, 2, 5. What this means is the round brackets means it's an open interval. We'll talk about it shortly. But we're talking about real numbers between 2 and 5. Now take note, there's an infinite number of them. 2, 2.0, 1, 2.5, 2.9. There's an infinite number of numbers between 2 and 5. Now the open interval means that my first number, 2, any element of the set is greater than 2. So 2 is not included and it's less than 5. So 5 is not included. So that's the notation we use for an interval. Now this set has an infinite number of elements. We can write it in set builder notation as it's, as it's written here, but we cannot tabulate it. If we had to sketch that on a number line, I'll start with 2, 5. To sketch 2, 5, if I'm looking at the real number line, all the real numbers, it's from 2 to 5. The way we show it is with an open circle. And we connect the dots, meaning it's everything inside between 2 and 5, just not 2 and 5. So on a number line between A and B, we've got open circles and we're connecting. Now a closed interval is when those two numbers are included, 2 to 5. So when they're included, so I'm going from A to B, but I'm including it. So I'm coloring it in on the number line. And that's all the real numbers from A to B. So it's every number between that. And so we get variations where the left-hand side is open and the right-hand side is closed, or the left-hand side is closed and the right-hand side is open. So we've got variations, and we'll look at examples of this. If A is my real number I'm given, it's all the numbers X, where A is less than X. So it's everything from a to infinity so whatever that number a is it's everything from a a is not included because it's a round bracket all the way to infinity so it carries on forever i can't show where it stops that's why infinity has a round bracket because i can't stop a square bracket is where i've got a point where i can stop all right and similarly if i've got values less than a number it goes all the way from minus infinity to b whatever b is so it goes in this direction all right and then again we can have them included and excluded and then on the number line or as an interval all real numbers we can show as an interval like that so let's look at some intervals here's intervals they're all subsets of real numbers intervals are always subset of real numbers so how do we write this and set builder notation and represent it on a number line two four that's the interval of all real numbers given 2 is less than x is less than 4. All right. Now remember with the natural number examples, we could write it in two different ways or a couple of different ways. Here we're pretty stuck on writing it in this way. Now we can't start it at the number 3. 2 is not included. But let's look at the number line. It's from 2 to 4. And when you draw a number line, you only need to put the numbers that are needed there. Don't put everything there. 2 is excluded, open circle. 4 is excluded, open circle. It's everything in between. So please do not tell me that the first number in the set is the number 3. It's not. There's a lot happening between it before I get to 3. There's an infinite number of numbers there. So take note, the interval, subset of a real numbers, we have to write it like that. All right, the next one from minus 1 to 5, it's all the real numbers. Minus 1 is less than or equal to x, less than 5. So if I draw that, that's from minus 1 to 5. Minus 1 is included, but 5 is excluded. So this set has a smallest element, minus 1. But it doesn't have a biggest element because it just keeps getting closer and closer to 5 and never gets there. And so we continue. That's the set of all x's. Now I want to show you something here. 3 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 9. I didn't write that x is a real number, and because the real numbers is the biggest set of numbers we're looking at in this examples, in these examples, and we will look at set theory, if I omit saying what type of number x is, we assume it's a real number. 
So I don't have to say real number, we assume. But if it's a natural number or integer, you'd better tell me. So let's take a look. That's from 3 to 9, where they're both included. From minus 12 to infinity, so it's all the x's that are greater than minus 12 or equal to minus 12. Or you can say minus 12 is less than or equal to x. Do not put infinity here in the explanation. It's very clumsy because we know x is just greater than or equal to minus 12. It's everything from minus 12 included all the way forever. It doesn't stop at infinity, so don't put infinity in the set builder notation. And this one, from minus infinity to 4, it's all the x's given x is less than 4. It's everything less than 4. And 4 is not included. All right, now we've got some interval notation. We want a uh, set builder notation to write them in interval notation and draw them on a number line. I'm not going to draw all of them. It's getting a bit monotonous. All the x's less than 3. So in an interval, that's from minus infinity to 3. Greater than or equal to 0, that's from 0 to infinity. 0 is included. The infinity and minus infinity is never included because I can't put, it, put a stop to them. From 0 to 4, 0 is included, 4 is excluded. x is less than minus 5 or x is greater than or equal to 5. Let's just stop and think here. This one we need a number line for. I'm saying here from minus 5 and 5. Let's just take a look. x is less than five, minus 5, so it's this side of minus 5. Or greater than or equal to 5, so 5 is included that way. So on the picture I can see it's made up of two parts. It's not just one interval. So this one I have to write in two parts in interval notation. Minus infinity to minus 5. And then we have a symbol there. I'm going to talk about this union symbol later. But you can write or as well. X is an element of this. Or X is an element of that. We're going to look at this symbol shortly. That Everything from 5 to infinity. 5 is included. It goes all the way to infinity. So that's how we represent that or. We'll talk about that symbol in the next video. All right, and here's another one with the or between 1 and 3. So it's from 1 to 3. And I go from 10 to infinity. I just want to mention, why don't I say and? If I said and here or and there, I'm looking for a number that's less than minus 5 and greater than or equal to 5. Remember from logic, if it's... A combined statement, an uh, and statement is true. Both portions have to be true. Can you think of a number that's less than minus 5 and greater than or equal to 5? Definitely not. That's why the word or is very significant there. And it means something. It's not interchangeable with and. It means totally different things. If you're not comfortable with the difference between and and or, go look at the playlist on logic. Now, let's mix up what we did in the first video with what we're doing here. We've got four sets here. The interval from 0 to 1, curly brackets. What does this mean again? This means I'm tabulating. This is just the numbers 0 and 1. This interval from 0 to 1 and the interval from 0 to 1 where 1 is included. I'm going to draw all of these on the number line. They look so similar, but they're all significantly different. So I'm going to get a number line here, and I'm going to put all of them there. They're all between 0 and 1, so I'm just going to list them underneath each other on the, with the same number line so I can compare them. A goes from 0 to 1. We both are included. That's A. So how many elements are in A? There's an infinite number of elements in A. All right, let's look at B. 0 and 1. Now on a number line, that's just two numbers. It's the number 0 and the number 1. Nothing in between, just those two numbers. So already, can you see that there's a difference between A and B? These two are not the same. Sets are only the same if I've got the same elements. These two are definitely not the same. For example, 0.9 is an element of A. 0.5 is an element of A. 0.3 is an element of A. They're not in B. B only has two elements. A has an infinite number of elements. So those sets are not equal. So the brackets are important. Make sure you're using the right, right brackets. C is a set from 0 to 1, excluded. And D Naught is excluded and 1 is included. All right, so none of these sets are equal. All different brackets, all meaning different things. Sometimes it's easier if you see it on a number line that you can visualize why they are different. 
So let's look at what we looked at the end of the previous video, the concept of, of subsets. Is it true that B is a subset of A? Well, B will be a subset of A if every, every element of B is also an element of A. Well, 0 is an A and 1 is an A. So B is a subset of A. And even stronger, B is a proper subset of A because there are still some elements of A that are not in B. Right? What about C and D? C is also a subset of A because every element of C is in A. A is not a subset of B, C or D. C is also a subset of D because every element of C is in D. And C is also a proper subset of D. So just keep that in mind. But the most important thing here to notice is that none of these sets are the same. The number 0 and 1 appears in the notation for all of them, but there are significant differences between these sets.